Hello everyone and welcome back to the Key Productive YouTube channel. Today I'm very lucky to be joined by Mason Brown who is uh, one of the brilliant uh, team at Microverse. So uh, Mason, uh, you're going to be showing us around uh, how you guys use Twist. We'll go through a few questions but maybe first you can start explaining a little bit more about what you do at Microverse and a little bit more about uh, what Microverse is all about. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you for having me on. I am, like you said, Mason, I'm the head of marketing at Microverse. Um, and what Microverse is, is it's an online school for remote software developers, um, where you pay nothing until you land a job. So essentially, we train and help you get to a life changing job. Um, and this is all done remotely. So everything online. Um, and we have students right now from more than 100 countries and team members across 12 countries. So we are a very widespread global team. Um, and we, you know, we're really on a mission to be able to connect talent anywhere in the world to opportunities globally. So really changing the way education works and being able to really help people regardless of which corner of the world, which city, country, et cetera, you are in. Um, and right now everything is done in English and we teach specifically full stack software development. Fantastic. So I bet you guys have been pretty busy over the the whole pandemic has probably changed the landscape. Um, how have you seen things change there? Yeah, so obviously it's brought uh, remote education to light even more so, right? I mean, now with people going back to school remotely, even schools like switching K through 12 or teaching remotely, it's completely changed how people look at education and how they view online education as well. And we've always been in online school. So it is a school, it's a full-time commitment. It's a, mm. it's a nine month program. And so it's a bit different than taking a course where it's pre-recorded and you can do it at your own pace. And I think mm. now people are beginning to understand the importance of having this online learning and experience. Um, a really unique thing with us is that you learn through peer uh, pair programming so it's peer-to-peer -peer collaboration in your learning and that way you're working with other students and learning with other students and from, mm -hmm. with students from all over the world and that's something that is obviously different than a traditional school yeah. um, and so we, we've seen a lot of people have interest in that and learning on a global scale and being able to connect to others on a global scale I think it's a very unique thing that we do and it's something that brings to mind you know the greater question around why is education the way it is now what does the future of education look like post pandemic you know during the pandemic yeah. how do we move forwards and how do we continue to help people around the world continue to upskill to to learn and so yeah it's been the yeah. uh, interesting <laughs> and exciting few months <laughs> yeah to say the least um and and you guys have been remote beforehand is that right yeah yeah so yeah. my converse has been remote since the founding um everyone works from their various corners of the world, which has been great because uh, all of our values and all of our systems and processes were built remotely. Um, but it's something that the founder has talked a lot about since the pandemic is transitioning to remote, going remote. What, what are the tools that are helpful? What are the processes that are helpful? How do you kind of make that transition? And, and what does that look like for companies that have always been in office, you know, and what mm. does that look like for companies that had sort of a hybrid model? So it's been, um, we've been doing a lot of educating around that too, which has been great, but obviously uh, there's, there's still a lot to be done and a lot of, you know, different companies functioning in different ways. Yeah, definitely. And um, you guys discovered Twist and I would like to just know, like, how did you first discover it? And also like, what drew you away from other applications like Slack? Yeah, so initially Microverse actually used Slack. And I think the, the biggest headache there was there was a lot of anxiety around like, what am I missing out on? Do I need to be online all the time? We, we very much foster and, and promote uh, asynchronous work. And hmm. Slack doesn't really have the best processes in mind around that. You know, if there's a, a green light versus a red light, are they online? Are they working? You know, maybe you want to close your, your app so you can really have that focus time. And, and Slack didn't enable the team to feel like they could do that. And so in coming across Twist, we love the idea that, you know, it is with asynchronous in mind, you know, you create channels, you create threads, everything is built around this idea of being able to work asynchronously, create, uh, you know, a new idea, link to documentation, have everything live in one place, and then you don't have to search through Slack threads or search through emails, it, it lives in that place. And you can fairly easily use the search function and, and find what you're looking for. 
Amazing. And um, you've found uh, plenty of different ways to sort of utilize Twist. Um, and I, I did, I think I saw in the article that you guys were using it as well to connect with Notion in terms of like referencing uh, like really useful uh, resources and conversations that are happening. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So we have like our documentation hub in Notion and you know, often it's like search in Notion for what you're looking for or search in Twist for what you're looking for. If it doesn't mm. exist, create the documentation, link to the documentation, and yeah. then we really easily can use the two tools in tandem and, and be able to find everything we need without having to, you know, jump through hoops and, and look through various places. It's all either in Twist or Notion. And we often also link from Notion to Twist to have like, oh, this is how the conversation started and this is how it continued and vice versa. Smashing. Um, do you, would you like to show us around uh, your you guys' Twist account? It'd be really exciting. So cool. in terms of the channels on the side, so how do you go about, how have you gone about organizing them? Yeah, so we have, as you can see, a lot of channels here. Um, these are organized based on the different teams and functions. So for example, the admissions team or business development, um, we have different channels that are more specific to those teams and they will automatically tag those in that team. Um, and then we have other channels that span across teams. And, you know, we have the general channel that we're looking at here, which is more general updates and things like that. Or we have, for example, the retreats channel, which had a lot to do with our retreat, um, which we were planning and then became remote this year. So different channels for different discussions and, and different uh, areas of the company. Lovely. And how do you go about using the start section? Obviously, that's quite an important part of the whole finding uh, various things. Do you use that section at all? Yeah, so I do. Um, I use it for things that are really relevant to myself. So for everyone, they have their own individual start section in Twist. And so something that I need to circle back on, something that um, I'm waiting for a response on. Personally, that's how I use this star channel so that I remember to circle back on these things and then I unstar them as I get the answers or as I've made the response that I needed to. Smashing. Um, and when do you go between, because obviously you've got threads um, as a mm -hmm. good way to start the conversation and start getting a piece of work done. But how do you define the difference between messages and threads? Do you have a set rule or best practice? Yeah, absolutely. So in general with Microverse, um, we focus on having everything as transparent as possible. So we really try to limit the amount of messages that we send um, mm. and have everything in the thread. So one, so that it's easier when we have new employees start or people that weren't involved in the initial conversation jump in and be able to review it. And, and two, it just makes it for easier like documentation overall for us. We don't have to search through our DMs. It's, it's in a clear thread with that subject line and, and that title and we know how to find it. Amazing. And uh, in terms of like uh, your own personal uh, management of tasks and activities that you're doing, do you use Notion or is it actually, do you use some of the Todoist integrations there to sort of connect that up? Yeah, so every team has different um, versions of sprint planning and to-do list. Personally, I actually do use um, Todoist and I love the feature how you can add to Todoist from Twist. Um, that, that's something that I, I do do as well, but every team has a, a different system. We have a lot of sprint planning as well in Notion. Um, we've used Airtable as well for that. So it depends on the, the specific team. Um, marketing is a smaller team, so I, I love my to do as functions too. That's it. Um, and what, like when you sort of land or you start the day uh, in the, uh, not in the office, <laughs> uh, at home, <laughs> do in you have a, in, in the, the virtual world, um, do you have like a set process to like uh, responding to certain threads or is it sort of like, uh, because I'm guessing you guys work on slightly different time zones, right? How, how does that work in terms of the time zones and then replying to people in, 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 in sort of day? Yeah, so generally everything that goes into Twist, we're not expecting a response right away. And, and that's what's really great about it is that, you know, of course we like to set timelines and we're really clear on those. So um, you'd often say like, hey, can you review this by end of day Friday, for example? And then that sets a clear outline for someone that, okay, this is when I need to get back to this by, but there is no expectation of, 
oh, I just logged on. Let me answer every twist message that I <laughs> tagged in that I was just in the thread on. Um, we also try to be really intentional with our tagging, which I think helps mm. a lot in order for people to kind of feel the the level of importance and prioritizing responding to messages. Um, if someone tags you in something, they require an action from you. Mm. And so that way, you know, okay, if I've been tagged in this, there's something I need to do, I'll add it to my to-do list. Or if it's a quick response, let me get to it now. Mm. Um, versus if you're just mentioned in a channel, it might be more for like high level overview for you to know the context of the conversation. Um, and then other times, you know, if we're having a group discussion on something or a team meeting and you need to review something that will be shared with everyone well enough in advance that it gives all of the time zones time to review that message or that twist thread and, and to know, okay, this is what I have to have prepared in time. Brilliant. And um, in terms of like, uh, like, for example, a student, um, I'm guessing the students sort of get access to the twist, right? No, so students have a student Slack, but Twist is just our team. Okay, it's just your team. Um, that that's good uh, sort of le uh, like sort of uh, segue to the 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 like for example, like you're you're trying to train somebody new on uh, someone brand new on your team uh, on Twist. How do you go about doing that? Do you have like a specific process or any best practices? Yeah, we actually have a whole part of sort of the onboarding that relates to how we use Twist, uh, the best practices for Twist. You know, it's important also as a team that we remember these and we circle back on them sometimes and say, you know, this is what we use the at function for. When you start a new thread, do you need everyone in that channel to be in the thread or can you delete that and just include specific people? Um, like, for example, when you default start a thread, it tags everyone in the channel. Mm. But by best practices for us, we say delete that and just tag those that need to be notified sure. um and so these are the different kinds of like practices that we try to enforce there and um we also have like walkthroughs of things using loom videos to show you know how we use things twist i believe is is fairly straightforward um but there are of course still some nuances that you discover you know such as how to link text which is taught here but it's not you know initially something that you might not know unless you had, were familiar with twist prior to that Sure, that's it. Um, and when it comes to the, uh, the the integrations, do you guys have any set up integrations or is it just a sort of add to to do uh, for your own sort of personal use? Yeah, we have um, Zap, like Zapier yeah. that, um, <laughs> that post into here and Integromats as well for some automated things such as when students get a job offer and, and these kinds of things, um, which is great. And our, our operations team set those up. Brilliant. And um, sort of a final question to, to, to wrap it up, because uh, like I'm a user of Twist, I actually have found it dramatically better when using it against Slack, just because it's just mental clarity. Um, mm -hmm. How would you say um, in terms of productivity or team productivity, have you guys improved since the, uh, like coming from Slack to Twist, like sort of get a gauge of like that sort of feeling? Yeah, I mean, definitely night and day in terms of one, it being more aligned with our values of asynchronous work and, and transparency. And two, just feeling that sense of, okay, this is really well organized. We know how to find something. The search function works very well. Um, all of our team is in here. We can tag and mention people as needed. And it feels very clean and clear to use um, versus having to, you know, dive through many Slack channels or threads and, and, you know, finding the thread within the channel. This is a much more streamlined and easy to use experience. And it's definitely made the team um, more productive in that sense. Brilliant. And uh, final, actually, just a bonus question. <laughs> uh, do you guys use the vacation abilities as well uh, inside of the the, the twist yes, app. I was trying to see if there was someone that was on uh, <laughs> on vacation. <vacation's> <laughs> to prove <laughs> we, a point, we do use it. Um, I love the little. Um, well, now I can't. Oh, there it is. Okay, I love the little vacation feature, and all of us try to use that as much as possible. It's great, and it also just helps set expectations in the sense that you know, if you're off for a few days or mm. for a, a long weekend or something like this, or even the whole week, that you know when they're on vacation until, and also that you won't receive a response until their vacation. Um, icon is is set off and there's a uh, sick leave as well that we use too so we try to tell everyone um, you know when you're taking that time off make sure you make it clear on twist as well and then that way everyone can see and they know that you're not going to be responsive until a certain date sure fantastic um 
Mason, where can everyone find you guys, Microverse, and uh, you know, discoverability on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, it's microverse.org. Um, that's where we live. And um, yeah, feel free to check us out there as well as uh, at Microverse Inc. on Twitter and Facebook. Fantastic. And did, out of curiosity, did you go with Otto the Otter as the name? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that you saw that. Um, that's what we'll be working on for some time. That is our mascot. Oh it's my God. Otto the Otter. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's the, uh, the micro official Microverse mascot. Oh my God. Yeah, it's the name of our son. So, uh, <laughs> oh, no yeah, good little, good little name, I think. I think. Keep going yeah, with it. <laughs> What's that? spelling and everything yeah 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 same spelling yeah oh, wow. oh. <laughs> it's I good because you can spell it backwards right <laughs> there you go exactly. and that... <laughs> i don't know where it works brilliant thanks so much Mason, and uh i hope you have a good rest of the day thank you you too